Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what I'm gonna be doing is talking about the Disk Station DS920 from Synology. Uh, they were nice enough to send this over to me to go ahead and use for a little bit and give you guys a review on. And in short, this thing has completely changed the way I do things around here. If you don't know, this Disk Station right here is a NAS or network attached storage device. Uh, in the simplest functionality, the main thing that they do is give you a kind of shared folder that you can easily access from all your different devices. It makes everything super convenient, but this thing goes way beyond that, and we're gonna be getting into that in this video. Now this right here is the actual NAS I got, the DS920. DS stands for Disk Station. Nine stands for the uh, maximum capacity of drives. You can see there's only four here, but it expands up to nine drives with an expansion unit. I don't have an expansion unit. And then the 20 stands for the year that it was manufactured. So that is the model that I am currently using. Now right here, the maximum storage for a single volume is 108 terabytes. Me, I don't have the most money in the world, so I actually just picked up four four terabyte NAS drives, giving us a total of 16 terabytes. Um, and I, they did not send those over, so I had to purchase those. And to help me with that, we have Skillshare sponsoring today's video. And yes, I know you've probably seen a Skillshare ad or two, but it's because they are ultimately a fantastic service. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions of people come together to take the next step in their creative journey. They offer thousands of classes, including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and much more. I've been using Skillshare a lot to improve my skills in DaVinci Resolve. I still have a lot to learn, but in my opinion, it does look better than it did, let's say, a year ago or so. Now, Skillshare is for just about everybody, whether if you're a beginner, pro, the dabblers, or if you are a master in your art who is looking to refine their skills. I recently finished up the course by MKBHD, and it was overall magnificent. And from there, I've been jumping into a lot of different DaVinci Resolve content since I've started using that video editor a lot more. Also, the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a free month of Skillshare. So big thank you to Skillshare for helping me purchase these hard drives. <laughs> now specifically, the drives that I'm using are the Seagate Iron Wolf 4 terabyte NAS drives. Out of all the reviews and everything I looked at, they just seem to be the best for what I'm gonna need and ultimately they were on sale, so they were cheaper. <laughs> and another reason why I went with these drives is Another thing, the I'll tell myself this, the real reason is the price, but being that it's only 5,600 repetitions per minute, it should be a little bit quieter in the actual uh, cabinet I have over there. Now this does support a good amount of different types of file systems and RAID types. Uh, RAID is basically a way to kind of secure your system and uh, if you have data, not data loss, if one of your drives goes out or something like that and you have RAID set up properly, uh, chances are you're not going to lose any data depending on the RAID that you pick. Uh, I'm currently using RAID 5 so I can lose up to one drive and I should be able to retain all my data. And after everything's said and done, my four four terabyte NAS drives gives me, after setting up RAID 5, I have about 10 terabytes of usable room. I don't have too much time to get into uh, RAID and all that, but if you're interested in the video, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to be linking to some of the resources down below. Now, when it comes to the system specs of this thing, it has a four core, two gigahertz CPU with burst up to 2.7. Now you can go ahead and throw in two NVMe SSDs to go ahead and increase your cache. And then when it comes to the actual RAM in the unit, the one I have has only four gigabytes and it's officially only expandable up to eight gigabytes, but I've seen other videos where people have successfully thrown in a 16 gig stick, giving you a total of 20 gigabytes. I'm still waiting for that. I did go ahead and order that and I will, uh, when I do install it, I'll post down below on if it worked and a link to the actual uh, stick of RAM that I got. So now when it comes to the IO of this thing, now I'm showing you B-roll, but I actually have it installed and all that and I don't wanna rip everything out and shut down all the services that I have going on in my house. So this right here is the IO. Of course, we have our four slots in the front for our actual hard drives. When it comes to the actual installation, it was very easy just to pop those in. You take off these little slide clip things, drop the drive in, push them back in, slide it in, plug it in. It's plug and play, it's really easy. Uh, it does support smaller like 2.5 inch drives, but you have to use the screws that are pre-included. So that is an option for you if you'd like that. 
Looking on the front, we have our light indicators to make sure everything's up and working, as well as a USB 3.0 port, of course, our power switch. And these little front drive bays can actually be locked, and I do have them locked, so you don't accidentally like clip one up and slide it out while it's running. That could be very bad. Now, taking a look at the back, we're gonna have two one gigabit ethernet connectors, an eSATA port, an additional three gigabyte USB, a security slot, and then we have some system fans to help everything keep cool. And then once you do have it all, all the hard drives in, it's really just plug and play. Uh, you go to a domain, I think it's find.synology.com, and it will scan your local network to find the device so you don't have to go and figure out what IP address it's connected to. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and actually connect to this NAS. So right here, this is what the login screen is. This is what I named my server. So then we just go ahead and type in our username and password. I'm gonna go ahead and stay signed in, save that, and here we are. I'm gonna go ahead and make everything just a little bit bigger so you all can see it, slide this over. And the UI is really cool. It's just like a desktop computer. You can even go highlight and select things here. Um, if I go over here, you can see our current status. It's healthy, you can see the IP it's on how long it's been up. I've been running it a lot longer than that, but I restarted it because I installed it into that server cabinet. And we have a nice little system resource monitor here. Now, if I go up and over, this is all of our different applications. Some of these I added, but most of these are pre-included. So we have our control panel, our file station, our package center, so you can go ahead and get more packages. Now let's go ahead and jump into this control center real quick, because this is gonna give us a good rundown of all the different things that we could do. Here under file sharing, you could set up a various shared folders for different uses. Uh, you can see I have Docker, Homes, and Media under RAID 5 as my current shared folders. And here you have all kinds of tools, all kinds of different creation tools. You can set up encryption for various folders and a lot more. If I go under file services, you can see all the different things that we could go ahead and enable, including FTP, which I currently have set up. And this is my main, what I usually use to connect to it, at least when it comes to mounting drives or mounting those external folders on my system. We have user groups. And this is really cool. You can see I have Brandon and Jenny. So I have my own account and uh, my fiance has her own account. So she has some of the services on her phone, such as the uh, photo suite. So instead of using something like Google Photos or Amazon Photos, we're able to uh, automatically back up all the pictures we take on our smartphone directly to the NAS here. So it's just really cool actually having all that data in your hands and not relying on some other third party to go in and back everything up. Even though, of course, it's good to have multiple copies in different places, Personally, I have the NAS, and then every once in a while, I'll back up everything to an additional drive and store it off-site. I have some of this stuff on a four terabyte drive on my computer, and then I go ahead and back up the really important things onto a Linode instance over on a Nextcloud. So getting back into this, you could go ahead and set up domains if you want to for connectivity. You really have control of just about everything. This right here is my Quick Connect. I'm actually gonna go ahead and uh, blur that out so people don't try to log in, and then I get all these notifications. <laughs> but you have a DNS, router configuration, and more advanced settings. Anything that you could mess around or change with in or change on a server, you can go ahead and configure here. Uh, under Info Center, this gives us more specific details on what's going on. You can see here it is a Intel Celeron. If we go under here under Virtual Machine Manager, I was playing around with this for a little bit, but I actually migrated to Proxmox on a separate machine because the CPU is, it works, for little things or for really lightweight Linux systems, but it it I can't use it on like a daily basis. It, it's really good for testing things out, but it's really easy to go ahead and create various virtual machines here, and they do run fairly well for what they are. The thing that I really like about this is Docker. Uh, I use Docker on here. One, it's a GUI version of Docker, so it's really easy to manage and add various containers. You can see I have Jellyfin, it's been up and running for a while, not using very much system resources. And this is where all my media is being hosted from. And it's really nice because all I do to set this up is uh, go over here under Docker. You see I have Jellyfin, I have some config stuff here, but all my media is hosted in the shared folder. So if I go under like adults, shows, you can see all the different shows I have on here. And Overall, it, it's just been working phenomenal for what it's giving us. And just jumping through these files, you can kind of see how quick everything is. It feels like you're on a native operating system, but we're really just messing with this through our web browser here. And then they have a suite of various applications such as Synology Drive. I haven't really set that up yet, but I am gonna be using that quite a bit. 
What I have set up is photos. So if I go ahead and open this up, hopefully it's nothing too rough. Nope, we're looking good, but I won't scroll down or anything. Uh, this, it looks just like Google Photos when it comes to the general user interface and everything like that. We can see our pictures. All this was automatically backed up from my phone. So if I go ahead and open up this picture here, it doesn't really have the uh, photo editing functionality, just really basic rotate type stuff. It would be really nice if we could actually uh, crop through here. But just for a really simple and well-designed photo backup solution, this is awesome. And then kind of on that note and getting back to accounts, if I go to our file station here, you can see we have home and homes. The other users on this account won't see this homes directory. They'll only see the home directory. But here you can see I could actually go into like her directory under her photos and go ahead and help her back things up to other sources, things like that. Hit OK. And you can see all her uh, different, all the photos are automatically backed up in directories by year. So that's very helpful. Now let's go over to the package center because there are a good amount of things in here. It's not incredibly packed full but you do have options. So if we go under all packages, you see we have active backup for uh, Google Workspaces, Microsoft 365. So if you already are using one of those services, it's just another way to keep your data even safer. Well, safer in respects to actually losing your data because you will have it in multiple sources. Uh, they have some antivirus stuff. They have audio station, which I might get into. They have a download station. This is super cool. You can like set up uh, torrents and different download things through here. So if you're wanting to download a torrent that's like a terabyte or you want to download like that giant NAS or uh, that giant NTF collection for some reason, this would probably be a reasonable way to go ahead and do that. Uh, they, they have a, a whole bunch of different tools. You can have a mail email server through here. Uh, they have their own media server application. Me, I'm using Jellyfin. Uh, note station, a lot of the things that you would see in something like Nextcloud, in any of these online storage solutions, uh, office utilities, PDF viewers, things like that, uh, they're going to give you. So if I keep scrolling down here, you see I have their own calendar. This is their drive service. This is their office suite. I haven't tried this out yet, but it looks really nice. It has an Excel, Word, PowerPoint, just all the basic office tools that you would actually want and you're hosting it all yourself. It's local on your own network. If you lose internet, you still have access to just about everything here. So overall, I'm really happy I got this thing. I have a server cabinet, so probably not anytime soon, but definitely in the next five or 10 years or so, I'm probably gonna end up upgrading to one of the rack mounted solutions. I think that would be super cool to have. And I mean, they probably have better processors too. So, and that's a guess, I'm not 100% certain. One last thing with the UI here, you go over here, you can search for things. You can enable or disable your various widgets. You can see right here, I could add more widgets if I would like to. I'm using a terabyte out of 10. And then we have our uh, options right here for my personal options, including shutting the system down, restarting, going to settings. And then of course, notifications, which I, which I recently just cleared. So that is the NAS. I definitely recommend you check it out. But overall, other than what I showed you as a general backup solution, media server, things like that, I'm going to be using this to host and manage all my video projects. So I don't actually have any of that on my local computer. And then it will be really easy to jump back and forth between my Linux machine, which is my primary workstation and my M1 MacBook with uh, DaVinci Resolve and do video editing on both platforms. So that is my review of the Synology NAS. I do definitely recommend you check them out. Uh, this is the one I have. It's a little bit more expensive. I think it's in the four or $500 range. But if you scroll down, they have some value series with uh, one up to four bays. So if you're looking for a cheaper solution, like this might be a really good option for you. Throw a 12 terabyte hard drive in it and just have a nice little extra backup solution. So with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day. Again, thank you to Skillshare for helping me purchase those hard drives. Uh, use the link in the description to get a free month of Skillshare. Additionally, big thank you to our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome if you're interested in supporting the channel. Links will be down below. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.